just to show that I, I really do, I walk the talk, as the saying goes. So I wear anti-glare glasses and I've got my, I've got my long sleeved hoodie on to give me um, microwave protection. And I really do work. And I'm, I'm earthed, my feet are on an earthing mat. My computer is earthed, which means that my wired keyboard and my wired mouse are also earthed. So I'm, I'm all prepared and shielded. Now, so in doing all of that, um, I have shielded my body from microwave radiation, most importantly, the electric fields um, coming off all my equipment, which allows me to use a computer and a phone for long periods with, without having electrosensitive symptoms. And so the extremely more than useful, it allows me to live my life and do my work. So um, it's all part of electromagnetic hygiene, which is as complex and involved as and needs as much commitment as germ hygiene does. So electromagnetic hygiene is complex because there are multiple sources of electrosmog and there are multiple types of electrosmog. And you have to work quite hard, think about everything you do in your life, just like germ hygiene. Um, you, you're conscious of, I've got a clean mug, I've got clean hands. Um, I had a shower this morning. Um, my food was prepared on, on you know, clean kitchen surfaces and I've got a fridge to stop things going off. It's as complicated that to live a life um, with good electromagnetic hygiene. So when I'm doing surveys, what I personally look for in, in a vast array of different types of electrosmog, I look for low frequency electric fields, I look for low frequency magnetic fields. Um, at those frequencies, they act separately, and therefore you need to look for them separately. Magnetic fields don't go far, so far, but they're very, very dangerous indeed. Lots of leukemia caused by, by these magnetic fields. The electric fields um, aren't so, aren't generally so serious, but they, they have the ability to go right across the room or, or further and um, in, in the domestic situation. Across the countryside, you know, the extraordinary strong magnetic fields coming off pylons can, can go quite a long way, but that's not normally the case um, in the domestic environment. Now, um, electric fields become problematic when there are biologically active frequencies in the electric fields. And so how do they get there? And generally speaking, these, um, these extended range of frequencies are called dirty electricity. And a lot of work has been done on dirty electricity. A lot of research shows that um, it, it causes diabetes, Diabetes and cancer, and not least many, many other um, electrosensitivity symptoms. And so where does it come from then? Why have we got all these frequencies? And what I'd like to do, I'd like to show you, um, I've got a laptop operated, um, I think called an oscilloscope, which shows you all the frequencies. So if I go share screen and I go share that, can everybody hope you can all see that? And so top left, so this this when I plug my oscilloscope in, especially made in made in Holland, specially programmed in Germany for looking at dirty frequencies. Um, so I've searched the world for this um, and it's worth it. Um, because it gives me so much analysis. Now, this, this is the main, top left is the mains, the mains voltage. It goes up and down 
50 times a second. So it's 50 hertz, 50 cycles a second. And if you notice, if you put a, a microphone to a flute in the orchestra, you'll see a lovely pure sign. It's the cleanest, clearest sign in the orchestra, which means that it's without harmonics. So the thing in the orchestra that makes all the different instruments characteristic, the oboe, the saxophone, the harp, whatever it might be, you tell it by hearing the extra frequencies, um, so-called harmonics. Now, in order to be a given note, I, or like in this case, 50 cycles a second, that is sort of a, <coughs> it's the noise of an electric shaver, the boo noise uh, is 50 cycles a second. And it's the same frequency that when you get the wiring wrong on your 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 hi-fi, you get a, a boo blah noise, and those are all 50 cycles. Because actually, because of good old earthing. Um now um can you see that on the what you should be Paul, can you see my cursor moving? Okay, good. Can you see that the it's a bit it's not a pure sine wave, it's a bit flat topped. And also there's a there's a sharp, sharp bend there. And in order to get these characteristic shapes of say clarinet or oboe, oboe or whatever it might be, you add harmonics and you add direct multiples of that 50 hertz. So you add 100, 150, 200, et cetera, right the way up. And if you add different amounts of that, you get, you get a different shaped wave. And in fact, you can go really extreme. You could say, for instance, create even a square wave there, which would go up along and down again, and up and down. And interestingly, if you put a microphone to a clarinet, that's what you get is a square wave. And that's what the jazzy distorted sound is, is that the oscillations of air inside that instrument get blocked and they don't, they don't flow neatly like they do in a flute. And that makes a difference. And so very much the same things happen in electronics. And when that happens, you get um, you get, or they're part of the same thing, all these harmonics. So this distorted shape here means we've got harmonics. So we've got multiples, any number of them, right up to microwave frequencies of the basic mains 50 hertz. And I can show it on this one, this beautiful oscilloscope that I have here. So if we look here, bottom left, can you see all these different spikes? So obviously there's the biggest spike is at 50 Hertz. That's the, do the dominant or the fundamental frequency. But what else have we got? We've got a tiny little squeak at hundred, as you said, twice 50 is hundred. And then three times, at three times we get a little, a little peak there. And then at 250, we get another one. And the 300 nothing or there's a tiny tiny little thing but the proper big peak at 350 so every hundred so every two of them we get this and that that is what generates this out of shape thing here now so every time we get distortion on the mains it introduces all of these different frequencies going right up and the problem with that is that we are, as the title of a recent book says, fundamentally electric. And we have all of our systems, our nervous system, our immune system, our sight, our cognition, all that kind of stuff, have an electrical frequency at which we resonate. So the fact that there are all these whole series of different um, harmonics means that it's likely that one of them 
is going to resonate with some of our one or more of our systems. And that is the problem with it. So, and when, when I have my, my mouse, well, you can't see it I'm on, on that one, but if you've got my mouse um, or the keyboard that I'm holding, then the, the, if there were, there's not in my case, but normally you've got a strong electric field between your hand and your mouse. But that mouse is supplied by electricity with, with these frequencies in there. And therefore, those frequencies, to some extent, they'll be slightly modified, but nevertheless, to some extent, those frequencies will be there in that interaction between your hand and that mouse. And when that, when that happens, well, there's all those different frequencies there, and one of them, one of them might well get you. And that is why dirty electricity is so important. Um, and it is so much part of electro sensitivity. And it's important to at least do your best to get rid of it. So where does it come from? How does it how do the mains get distorted? Well, obviously, if your wiring's no good and you've got, you know, bad connections everywhere. So the classic case would be um, in a, uh, a kitchen where there's been a lot of frying. Um, the plugs that plug into the wall in the kitchen are going to be covered in fat and they don't connect very well and you'll get arcing and you'll get um, arcing, arcing with little sparks jumping across the connection. And th that's actually how old radio transmitters, so Marconi, in order to get radio signals across the Atlantic, actually had, had a great big sparks being generated, they which he then put into Morse code of the spark on, the spark off. And it, it generates a whole range of um, radio frequencies. And that's why um, it is picked up so strongly by uh, radios. If you have got the radio four on at the time or whatever, then you'll, you'll hear the arcing as you put the plug in. So that's one source. So bad wiring. And um, so when I'm doing my service, I look to check to see how old the wiring is and what, what condition it looks like and any, any dodgy sockets. So first thing then, part of electromagnetic hygiene is to make sure that your, your, your electrics are good and that you haven't got any worn out sockets where, where the connections are bad. So that's one source. The next source is your wiring acting as an aerial. And there, there is one particular very low frequency radio signal, which actually um, acts as a time signal so that clocks uh, can, can keep accurate. And that particular time signal um, is running all the time. Um, and our wiring tends to pick that up. So external radio frequencies is the first one. The second one is our mains. So in, in England, the power circuits uh, come in what called rings. And it goes around in a ring, connects a, a double socket wire, double socket wire, double socket wire, going out from the fuse box, goes round and back in. And the problem with that is that anything near it, with which has got, say, a, a transformer, will cause currents and noise to go around the ring. So a, com a thing that I commonly recognize, and all electricians are trained to do this, is to what's called break the ring. So you have what's called radial circuits, which are just how you'd think they'd be connected, a piece of wire socket, piece of wire socket, piece of wire, or sort of daisy chained, around the house, but not, not in a loop. So you can't do what's, have what's called an induction loop, which where you induce, induce currents. Now, so that's that. Uh, so ring mains, they're, they're a problem. Um, and then the big, the big, big cause of all of these different frequencies um, 
are power supplies. Now these power supplies can do two things. They can work both ways. So on your laptop, you've got a plug, you've got a fat wire, you've got a little black box, and then you've got a thin wire, then you've got your laptop. So the thick wire is carrying mains, 230 volts, then you've got a black box, and then you've got 20 volts coming out the other side, which charges your laptop battery. And on the main side, it's what's called alternating current, where the current goes backwards and forwards, but for the low voltage, um, to just to charge the battery. It's nominally called direct current. It isn't at all, there's loads of noise in it, there's all these frequencies in it, but nevertheless, it's called direct current. And um, it's really important to help smooth that out by earthing the chassis, we're back to earthing again, earthing the chassis of your computer with an earthing cable. We sell them on our website, um, and it's called a computer earthing cable. You just plug that into the wall and plug the other end into the back of the computer at a USB port. And that quiets, quiets things down wonderfully. Um, but these power supplies were, are what's called a switch mode. And a switch mode power supply, uh, an SMPS, is uh, work typically at instead of 50 hertz, 50,000 hertz or 50 kilohertz, plus or minus, so about 30 kilohertz to about 70 kilohertz. And this noise is everywhere. It takes the power off the mains with those frequencies in there, and it delivers power to your laptop with those frequencies in there. Um, they can, all of these things can be designed out but everything still works with them still in. So when it's a choice of making the power supplies as cheaply as possible, they tend to just pull out all the, the nice smoothing capacitors and whatever else. And so we end up with all this noise on our equipment. Well, I've got various questions that have come in via, via email. And so, and thank you very much for, for sending them in. I, I look forward to answering those in a minute. Now, so we have, um, on power so anything electronic, like the screen I'm looking at, or you know, a radio or whatever, um, the answering machine on my telephone, etc., is all powered by switch mode power supplies. Um, all right, yes, okay, so, um, so from Gibsey, um, thank you, Gibsey, um, and Yes, if you can use your power supply off your, your laptop powered by the battery and not on a power supply, you will find it more comfortable. Um, do cooker clocks have both RF and dirty electric as they really affect me? Um, absolutely, possibly anything electric or electronic can have and have can, can have dirty power and some of these older stuff if it's quite an old cooker can be really quite seriously bad um and one of the worst things i ever saw was a very tiny 1930s um doorbell um charger so it was like we're just providing six volts for someone you know, to drive the doorbell it was extraordinarily noisy. I, I, don't know, I, th I think the Stetson meter went down from um, about 300 to a good 50. Um, so for those who are not familiar with the Stetson meter, You, you saw from the diagram that I showed you through my on my, my laptop oscilloscope how complicated the figures are. Yeah, the situation is with dirty electricity. But this is just a little plug-in meter called a stencil meter, and that it turns all of that complexity into one signal. Now, obviously, that's going to be horribly um approximate um, and rough and ready, but actually it's very a very useful indicator of what's going on. And also 
it's research backed. There's a lady called Magda Havas, her website's well worth looking at, M A G D A H A V A S. Um, she's a Canadian uh, uh, university professor, uh, retired now, but she's got a really good website with lots of um, information there. And so, for instance, she's worked with the, the American Firemen's Union to make sure that the um, the drying towers associated with you know, drying the hoses um, in fire stations um, don't have powerful uh, transmitters on them because the firemen were all getting sick because they have to sleep and stay very close to the fire engine. So when they get a call out there, they just jump down the greasy pole and go straight into the into the fire engine. But anyway, so um, I've I've helped one um, Welsh farmer actually um, who was suffering because of the strong radiation at the, at the at the fire station, and he he slept in one of our sleeping bags, and that shielded him enough to so that his electrosensitive sy symptoms went right down. But anyway, that's Magda Havas. She's um, and also, she found out that um, dirty electricity causes um, people with what's called brittle diabetes, which diabetes that goes in and out to induce the di diabetes. And so that um, a lot of diabetics are told to exercise hard. And if they exercise on an electronic machine, it, it's going to be, it defeats the object um, because they're full of dirty electricity because the motor drives for the, for the bed <laughs> that you run on are what's called variable speed motors. And more, of, more about variable speed motors, especially we're talking about um, heat pumps and also modern, modern fridges and modern um, and uh, washing machines particularly all use variable speed electric motors and they're driven by um, nasty devices called motor drivers um, and uh, they produce extraordinary amounts of dirty electricity on an everyday basis so if you don't if you don't feel happy with your new washing machine that's why anyway um so um So when we come on to renewables, we talk about um, we're talking about serious power here. It's not just like powering your computer or your hi-fi or whatever. This is about making um, air conditioners. Yes, they use a lot of power and very similar. They are another kind of heat pump, actually. And um, they've got modern ones to be efficient, have variable speed, variable speed electric motors use less to generally use less electricity than fixed speed electric motors. So that's the direction everything is going in. And each of those variable speed electric motors got a controller and it's the controller that makes all, all the dirty electricity that doesn't do us electrosensitives any good at all. And the way, the important thing is to, so, um, right. Other thing, the other big thing with renewables is, is solar panels or uh, the worst dirty electricity typically comes from inverters. And so their power supplies backwards. So you end up with, with solar panels on the roof, which are producing um, many volts, 12, 40, 50 volts each on one full power. And they're added up. So you end up with about 600 volts. Uh, per loop going in into your inverter, what's well, so the so-called DC side. Um, and then you've got the output side, which is the AC side, when you're looking at 230 volts um, and, and, and very high currents, um, maybe 30 amps, which um, normally would melt ordinary, ordinary wires. So um, they are switch mode, but the other way around, they have DC coming in and they have AC coming out. So it's the opposite way around to your laptop where you had AC coming in and DC going out of the power supply. So an inverter is a power supply the wrong way around where you've got DC going in, you've got AC coming out. Now, um, 
four smaller applications like caravans, log cabins, that kind of thing. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll cover that. I'm just, just a, a good question about the, um, hope you all got to see that. Um, do the panels themselves have um, uh, EMFs coming off them? Inverters. So these inverters, instead of producing, you would expect them, well, they're producing mains voltage, aren't they? So they're going to be producing a sine wave, aren't they? Nice smooth wave at 230 volts, yeah, at 50 hertz. Well, they're pretty good and pretty accurate at producing 50 hertz, plus or minus, very small amounts. And it has to be like that or they wouldn't work. But what they do do <clears throat> is they have a switch which switches up, then down, then up, then down, and up, then down. So they have a constant wave like this at normally 19 kilohertz, so at about 40 times more the, the frequency that we want. So we should be having like this. And what we've got instead is that. And then the switch comes in and does that. And then it says up and then down, then up and then down. And it, it's a very, very vague approximation to um, to what the mains should look like. So if I share my screen again, and go back to what we had before here, you see, um, actually, this isn't the output from the inverter, but this is what our mains now looks like when the inverter's connected. And how do I know that the inverter's connected? This is the clue. So guess what frequency that is? Look, this line here is 25 kilohertz, and that is 12 and a half. So somewhere between 12 and a half and 25 kilohertz towards 20 is this enormous peak here. So this is, this is the 50 hertz, and this is 19 kilohertz. Well, well, well. And so the oscillator the in the inverter works at 19 kilohertz. So it's pretty obvious that this peak here, that the, the sun is shining. The sun is shining, the inverter's on, and I've connected to the ordinary, any, any old plug inside the house, and look what it's got. It's full of this. Now, if we look very detailed right down into this, can you see there's lots of little notches there? That's what this this is a zoom in into that. And so what we've got all, all these different different frequencies, um, dozens and dozens and dozens of them with a massive one around plus or minus 19 kilohertz. And it actually um, varies that frequency deliberately. They could just do a pure single one. But then if they do that, it breaks the it breaks the regulations. There's too much power at a given frequency then. So they vary the frequency a bit to spread it out. And it shouldn't be there at all, nothing. It really should not be there. So we sell um, little plug-in filters. And do you remember I said that, you know, ordinary domestic stuff like plugging in computers and screens and ordinary uh, electronics, Cause can cause um, can cause dirty electricity. Well, there are little plug-in filters that cost um, 30 or 40 pounds, um, which can quite successfully get rid of that. And you can you can you can measure it on on one of uh, sorry, yeah. Can you see this? You can see both uh, so, so yeah, on one of these you can you can measure it. So um you can see that they work pretty well, and you can do, you could do it yourself. Oh, good. Okay, you have eight, um, and slightly more than I recommend, but it, yeah, they do. You can keep plugging them in, 
and um, they're, they're not ideal from an electrical engineering point of view because they, when you first switch them all on, if you have a power cut or whether it, it does cause huge um, consumptions of, um, of electricity, which the electricity supply don't like very much. So, um, I, but for your own purposes, then yes, they will, they will work. And they've made a huge difference to me personally um, when I when I put them in, in terms of the the load you feel living in a wired house with with that, so they're good. But when you've got something as powerful as an inverter, and you saw what the the big chunk of frequencies were, when you got as powerful as that, those little filters just don't touch them one little bit. So the way this thing works is that it goes up to, it measures what's called GSUs, Graham Stetzer units. And it's quite a complicated sort of algorithm of how they connect, collect, how they calculate it. Um, and it goes up to, it goes up to 2000, actually 1999. And after 1999, there's an overload symbol and, and a letter one appears in the corner there. And that means, I'm overloaded, I can't read it anymore. And houses with inverters always give a one. They sort of off the, basically off the scale. Ideally on these, you should be for ordinary purposes about 50. And if you can get it down to 25, you've got an electric sensitive person, try to. But often the, the little filters won't go below 50 say. Um, they just they reach a plateau and however many you put in doesn't make any difference. Um, can you recommend an inverter brand model for better electricity quality? Yes, you can for campers, for I'm doing, I'm, um, I'm reducing EMFs in, um, in a, a client's um, camper van and um, Oh, the electronics are complicated in there. It's got a solar panel and it's got two controllers. It's got an alternator with a voltage regulator. It's got, and, it, it, and it's got an external power. So you, you plug in at the campsite. So they're really, really complicated. But anyway, before we get into all of that, um, what do you need? You need a specially designed filter for an inverter. And I have spent the last year researching it and developing it and testing it. And we've installed our first one and it was unbelievably successful. We got, so with the inverter on without the filter, this is off the scale. And with the filter in, it comes down to 24. So you well, you're down to the levels that um, good old Graham and Stetzer um, recommend for, for electrosensitives. This is a seriously big box. It's it's that wide and that that high, and, and 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 that thick, full of stuff, and it's partly off the shelf from uh, a Swiss company, but we've added a lot of improvements to mop up a lot of the extra frequencies that affect electrosensitives. So we've got we put a lot of work into this, and it's um, I'm, I'm so pleased to say, and we've got a, a great deal of interest and in many many customers queuing to to get them installed to be installed by a, a solar panel inst installation company obviously we're not qualified to do electrics um, let alone specialist electrics for uh, solar installations they deal with all that because um, the um, has to be there's a huge amount of safety uh, software and whatever else and organization of of the uh, inverter um, because you've got 600 volts often coming off the roof which is absolutely lethal now so i've shown you at 19 kilohertz what's coming out is real loud loud power i liken it actually to motorbikes it's like they're selling all these inverters, they're selling all this equipment without any silences at all. Although we can't hear it, yeah, but we can read it. And we certainly feel, electrosensitive certainly feel it. And so um, I live on a high street where 
sometimes it's a Saturday morning, a fleet of Harley Davidsons come past and you can't hear yourself think. And uh, it's a bit like that with inverters. They're all putting out this incredible noise, which needs dampening down. We're basically a silencer. So I've decided to call these things the mute. So it's, this is like a mute on a trumpet where it just stops it blatting out all the noise. Anyway, so we've, um, and it, uh, and, and it's all very good, straightforward science um, or electronics has been around for years. It's called EMI, electromagnetic interference. And all the uh, is textbooks and university courses and business knows what have been doing this for years. That's why when mobile phones first came out, they used to interfere with your radio. It used to go da 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 da. I don't know if you remember that noise, but where was the mobile phone looking for the mast? Um, waiting for a reply and that doesn't happen anymore and that's because they got the electromagnetic interference sorted out so the electronics industry and telecoms industry understands incredibly well how to stop different electronics units so your mobile phone doesn't stop your car transistorized ignition working for instance um, or or put the electro ele you know the electronic brakes on or stops the electronic brakes braking system working so it's stop they've stopped that interference because they're engineers and they understand that this unit will interact with that one but what they've forgotten is this unit here us um that were our bodies um being um having this interference um and uh they've forgotten that but the science and the technology all exists. So just latched onto that, all very straightforward stuff. And, and it works and it's really good. So um, now, so there's two sides to it. One is the filter on the output. And that's the one I was talking about. Forgotten or willful negligence. Yeah, well, the reason actually is cultural um, and it's to do with medics and biologists over here. How many, how many biologists or medics know anything about electrobiology or electricity or anything or physics or anything? Like that? And how many physicists over here like me and um, um, telecom, let alone telecoms engineers, how many telecoms engineers know any biology? They just don't, it's a cultural thing. And so, I mean, I, I think I've explained before about how they test for um, whether a mobile phone's radiation is harmful or not. Um, it's the engineer's version of a human head. So it's a glass jug. Um, um, yeah, so um, a it's a glass jug, head-shaped glass jug full of electric conductive gloop. Um, and that they clamp a, a mobile phone onto the glass ear at the side of the head. And then they measure the temperature change with a temperature sensor in the middle of the gloop for six minutes. And if the temperature rises less than one degree centigrade in the middle of this um, glass jug, then the mobile phone is safe. Yes. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not kidding. This is how it's done. It's unbelievable. You know, this is what, you know, this is the O, -le -o well, I'm showing my age now, O-level GCSE physics um, version of safety. It's, it is incredible. Anyway, sorry. So, yes, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing, the, the fact that electronic, electronic engineers, there's, there's no bridge between, between the two worlds. There's a tiny community of um, biophysicists um, or electrobiologists or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they've all been screaming for years saying, Mike, are you with us a problem? Help, come on and help. And um, the, um, there are lots of, anyway. So Makola, for instance, has, has, um, has, clapped, is, has bought into that. And he's written a very good book called EMF, um, EMF uh, apostrophe D. Um, which I recommend. It's very well written um, and does talk about dirty electricity in there. Although um, there are certain things on like all of this, the advice that you get from people 
um, you need to be very, very careful of, um, most especially on earthing, that you get it right, or you can make things much worse for yourself. And that's why so many people struggle on with terrible electrosensitive symptoms. Um, and there are a few lucky ones like me who, yes, I do struggle, but I managed to make my life um, good enough so I can travel on trains and I can um, fly, air, fly in aeroplanes and things without getting too ill. Um, so I can manage a, a, normal, a normal life anyway. So it's important to get every, all the details right for your electromagnetic um, hygiene, other, or you can make everything work. Battery plants, I thought I imagined some kind of sort of bionic, bionic pot plant. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, yes. Mm, well, yeah. Anyway, so um, back to inverters. So there are two sides to the inverters. There's the AC side, which is pushing the power out to the mains, which we've dealt with. And we've got, we've got this filter called a mute that you that you you screw on the wall below it and connect. And the crucial thing about our filter compared to the other ones is the power actually has to go all the way through it. All the power goes through, through the filter. It, the filter isn't on the side of the wiring, just trying to mop up what it is. So it's not in, in, in electronics terms, it's what's called in series. So the power goes through it and out the other side, whereas all the other filters um, are in parallel. So if you could imagine a stream coming down here and you've got a side channel, that's how they're bolted on. And that's how our little filters work actually, um, because you can just plug them in, you don't have to have an electrician in to undo all the wiring and reconnect it all. So, um, so it's in series, not in parallel, but what that means is you have to build it to take all the power, maybe 30 amps. So it's sort of like, you know, seven or eight kilowatts um, uh, going through the filter. And it's got to be able to take that power. The wires have got to be fat enough and all of the equipment to be capable of taking that. So that takes special measures, special engineering to make sure that the thing um, will, not, will not overheat and that it's specified right. And so, and, and ours is, and it's, is, I'm pleased to say it tested wonderfully. And um, so um, let's look at the DC side then. So the DC side is that there's a, a wire that goes up onto the roof that connects to the first panel. And then there's another wire that goes from the first panel to the second panel. And then from the third panel and so on and so on. All the panels are in one big loop. And, and so you can add the voltages up. And they say they're 50 volts each. You can easily have 600 volts coming back out and off the roof and in there. Now, what happened in America is that radio hams, the amateur radio people, lost their ability to be able to receive and transmit at FM, at, at FM radio levels. And they did just, they were just completely swamped by all of the radio frequency coming off the roof. And how did that happen? Well, the thing is that um, you saw that there were all these different frequencies coming off the inverter from my oscilloscope. Well, some of those are FM frequencies, FM radio frequencies. And very often when you buy an FM radio, it's in the form of a loop, a, a radio antenna, an, an aerial for FM. It's, it's done with a loop and that's, they work beautifully. And that's exactly what we've got, except this aerial is the size of a house. So it goes up one side of the roof, along the roof and back down the other side. This is huge aerial. And um, this is huge FM aerial. And so you have to damp that out. And we, we also, as part of the installation of our filter, we, we, da we damp all that out, um, sometimes using little filters uh, in, in electronic boxes, sometimes using things called ferrites, which you clip on, onto the wiring. It all depends on what we measure. It's coming off the roof. But anyway, um, 
so far, so far, so good. And um, that's that's where we're at. Um, Can I ask? I can't find the chat. I don't know how to do chat. I did submit one this morning to Guy about um, hair dryers was one. OK, um, hair dryers. Hair dryers, OK. The other one. <laughs> The principle oh, um, is it worth unplugging the um, router router at night? Oh, okay. Well, let, let's one question at a time, please. So, hair dryers. Okay, if you're electrosensitive, try and live without using hair dryers. Hair dryers produce huge magnetic fields. It's because of the power taken by the um, heating coils that heat up the air, and so. If you use them, hold them well away from your head. I can't go near them. They f affect me terribly. Um, and um, so um, goodness knows what long term effects it has on hairdressers. They are shockingly large, these fields. So just try and avoid the use of hairdryers as much as you possibly can. The thing is, the other thing was that you asked in your question in your email to me was that you can vary the power on the, on the, that's that's a red herring. That's not a problem in this particular case. It is a case where you vary the power to things with what's called a thyristor, which is what happens in theatre lighting. Lighting, and so if I, as I've done, I've ended up sitting up in the gods to get cheap tickets, uh, being a skinflint. Um, and I'm right by the lighting. And, oh, it just gets me horribly. There's so much dirty electricity in the damp, the dimmed lights that it just, I just wither. Anyway, so watch out for that. Um, so in certain cases, dimmed light, and also generally domestically, having a rotating dimmer, dimmer switch instead of just an on-off, don't go there get rid of those dimmers. So what I do, so for in my kitchen, I've got three banks of lights, uh, which you switch off at the wall. But then I've got a master switch that switch all of them on and off. So it's easy just walking in and out of the kitchen to switch it on and off. But also you can vary the amount of level of lighting that you have because I've got three banks of switches. So anyway, that's my tip about dimmers. Um, what was the other thing about whether to switch your modem off at night or your router off at night? Yes. Well, um, well dear, if you switch your router off at night, um, it, they tend to run a bit slower because they keep trying to speed up and speed up and speed up until they get a poor quality and then they slow down again a bit so that given your wiring and your situation in your road and that kind of thing, uh, you get the maximum speed that you get there. So if you switch off at night, you'll always be a bit slower than you might otherwise be. So if you're really concerned about the speed of your thing, it's too a bit slow, keep your, keep your modem on if you can. Now, so keeping the modem on means you've got the dirty electricity, hopefully in small amounts, from the power supply to the router. And this can become... The power supply like this can only for smart meters where you've got dozens of smart meters connected in an area with the same power supplies, you can have a kind of build up. Um, and the fact that there's lots of very similar devices connect all connected up can mean that it can affect you worse. Um, but so the power supplies for Yes, yeah, so we're talking about routers and whether they should be on or off. The thing about the router is it does two things. One is, so I covered in the last meeting, it's got you from, from routers. You've got plugs in the back, what's called Ethernet, um, which you plug, you, there's a whole row of normally yellow colored sockets in the back, which, um, which allow you to connect to the internet without Wi-Fi. And the key is to get into, log into the um, control software or the little computer in the router to switch the Wi-Fi off. 
And as I covered in the last thing, that's not always straightforward. And in some cases, it means even getting another router, plugging another router in. And some of that you can get ones with a button on it. You just switch the Wi-Fi on and off with. But it still keeps you going out to the internet. So if you're like me, you use the internet uh, for your telly, um, then you can. It's you. It, you've got that all day and all night still, um, which is what I recommend. So whatever you do, whatever you can to get rid of Wi-Fi in your building. It's a very, very aggressive um, signal. It sounds like a machine gun. It's, da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da -ga. it's 10 beats a second, um, which is very disturbing indeed. Um, and um, it, is, it is very, as an electron, it's best avoided. So, okay, anyway, so pre-2002 cars advised, well, I've got a 2011 car. That's all right for me. Um, and I, it hasn't got Bluetooth. Um, if you have a car with Bluetooth and your stereo, get the Bluetooth disabled. Not always very easy, but that's what you need to do. Um, and um, I, I find that I find I'm not affected. I'm not affected. Everyone's different, but I'm not affected by my 2011 car. Um, is there a way of making an electric car okay for an electric sensitive person? Uh, choose a simpler model. Uh, choose a newer model. Uh, newer models tend to be better than older ones. Um, and um take some i mean uh, i've done a fair number of measurements they're all pretty awful um bmws particularly the later ones tend to be better than most um also the um teslas um are pretty good but old toyotas the prius isn't that kind of thing are completely awful I have a short taxi ride in a Prius and I get out and I'm like a jelly, I can hardly walk. Um, and remember to switch off the Bluetooth when test driving, it emits a lot. Yeah, so um, um, uh, yeah, so Um, in terms of dimmers, I've not come across um, ones that reduce voltage instead of doing pulse modulation. Um, you're into old fashioned stuff with lots of lots of copper wiring and you know things like that. Um, things called varistors and stuff like that. It's really old fashioned stuff. The, the theoretically, the dimmers can do that, but better to have banks of lights working at full power. Okay, well, your router switched off um, and never had a problem with speed. That, that's good. Um, right, well, so I've got a sort of standard set of recommendations for people. I don't have time to cover it now. It's quite a long list. But there is an awful lot you can do with um, standard wiring talking to a a, a, a an ordinary trained certified electrician to make things 10 times better yes and fireproof wiring done properly is is a great help um, because it, the um, aluminium shielding of that which is there to reflect the heat to stop the inner fire to stop the uh, to keep the wiring from melting a bit longer so you can get out and all the fire alarms are still working okay um, um, and so the aluminium she actually seals the electric field and to some extent the dirty electricity as well. Should you have rings or not? Definitely, definitely not have rings. Um, they're called, the alternative to rings are called radials and the electrician will completely understand that. Yes, well, on Teslas, just test with your own, have a, have a word 
on the um, groups, on the user groups to see whether you can find a way of switching those things off. Um, and if you if you find a way, then please let us all know. Um, magnetic fields are the things to watch out for in cars because you can't reduce them. And also you can't avoid them. On, on electric cars, the motors um, work on magnetic fields and also the current in the uh, wires feeding the motors coming off the batteries all produce um, very strong magnetic fields. There are ways of designing it so that you don't do that. So that, for instance, Volvo, I had a Volvo, which was a 2008 that had a battery in the back. And there was a modification, which was actually a Volvo specified modification for an electrosensitive. The cable for the battery went under the passenger footwell so that you were sitting on a very strong, while the battery was charging, your feet were centimeters, if not millimeters, from this um, this cable produced with very high currents in it. And what they did produce is they took another wire from the engine compartment generator back to the um, boot um, and twisted it round the main power cable to the battery, and that reduced the magnetic field um, a, a very a, a lot. Yes, I found that with BMWs too. I suspect that the founders of the building biology movement are fairly close to Munich. And um, I suspect there's some, some information has leaked from the building biologists across to, to BMW. Um, okay, I've, I've not heard of not, no rant for you. I will, I will check that. Thank you for that. I have wired um, internet for TV and everywhere, but I had to open my fancy LG OLED TV and remove the Wi-Fi. Well, what I've found with Samsung uh, smart TVs is if you plug um, an ethernet cable in the back, the Wi-Fi switches off. They're always changing these things and maybe it doesn't do it anymore, but I, I found on models uh, one or two years old that was happening. Well. Um, Almost all electrosensitive people are, to some extent, multiply chemically sensitive as well. Um, and um, Gillian McCarthy always used to say, and she was really expert we used to, on electrical chemical sensitivity, said that you cannot be chemically sensitive without being electrosensitive as well. And I'm not sure whether the reverse is true. Um, but diesel, for me, just personally, is far more, um, diesel fumes are far more upsetting than petrol fumes. Um, and um, both of the, the vapor coming off when you're filling the tank, but also for the exhaust fumes as well. Um, so um, I would say, that from a chemical point of view, petrol is better. But some um, petrol cars, um, I had a Saab with a new kind of type of ignition that had a coil for each cylinder. And um, for a while, I was very badly affected by that. So um, yes, um, um, I think it's a personal thing. So always to try it. Um, and see whether whether the electrics, um, the electric. So um, fundamentally, the diesel engine works by uh, compressing compressing the the fuel mix, fuel air mix, um, so that the compression causes the big heat buildup, which causes the ignition of the thing. Whereas with a petrol car, you have a spark plug. And to drive the spark plugs, you need 40, 60,000 volts. Um, and people are affected by those. How do you know if you've got ringed wiring at home? Uh, the default is having ring, ring mains. Um, and um, 
So assume that you have, um, and you'll if you want, and call an electrician in to say, and it, it normally the, it, it, it's very relatively cheap to have that done. You don't need to have the floors up on the walls out. Um, they just disconnect the ring side. But when you get back to the consumer unit where all the trip switches are, it might need an extra couple of trip switches. So you might need a bigger consumer unit. My plug-in hybrid cars, what, what, what type have you got? Um, <clears throat> I, that's great if they, they are, and they, they're generally improving. So Michael, you, you've run BMWs, do you? Um, Tell us more about the boot mute. The, the mute, um, not including uh, installation. They're a big unit, uh, um, and there's a lot of work gone into it. So they are um, uh, currently two thousand four hundred pounds. Um, no, no VAT due, um, luckily, um, and um, that's where. Hopefully, as production gets going. Um, prices will come down, but that at the moment this is what we have to charge to to make a profit. EHS self diagnosis. I haven't seen that. I suppose we all do because you can't get it from anyone else. I like the picture. Um, yeah, it looks nice. I, I'm looking at no 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 rad for you dot com. Um, are they are they American or are they? Yeah, they recommend a cornet. I, I'm not a fan of cornets at all. Um, the reason is because you need something that um, we've, we've gone over. We used to do M fields. We've gone over to do the um, the Canadian sets. Of I could talk about meters another time, but you need a meter that gives an output that um, means something to you um, rather than just numbers and um, you need you need it needs to be traffic lighted and it needs to be set at levels that are appropriate for electrosensitive people. So okay, um, I think that is it for today. Um, we um, any any oh we've got six new messages, seven new messages. So. Please comments on Guy, just to let you know that I have recorded the messages this week. So we we, we could answer them at a, a later time if you okay. if you don't wish to do something. Well, so um what would you what would everybody like for for next week? Um Electromagnetic hygiene is the key, really, isn't it? Um, BMW 330E and, and X1 2.5E. Right. OK, well, that's good to know. It's good to know that the latest BMWs are good. Do you need one mute for each inverted? Um, depends on the setup. I've never seen a setup yet with more than one inverter, but there's no reason why. Um, it depends how are the both inverters connected out to the same to the same main system. You might be able to get away with one for both then. 
He's been a BMW man all my life after they solved the problem with drunk motor fields, yes. So I used to work in the, um, in the motor industry, um, making cars safer. I used to be doing crash, mathematical modeling of crash simulation. Um, and uh, did that for a, num a number of years and been, visited BMW a number of times. Um, do I sell these mutes? I very much do. We'll be, we'll be announcing the sales um, and go up on the website in the next few days. So it's not so much um, shielding um, required around inverters. It's um, because, um, well, they, they should, um, some of them need Wi Fi or seem to need Wi Fi to control them. Um, but it shouldn't really because they've all got Ethernet alternatives which should be usable. Um, and the question is whether the the firmware and the control systems will actually do that. So something that we, we could, um, so really it's not shielding they need, it, it is um, dealing with the electromagnetic interference, which then needs filters, filters for the direct current side and filters for the main, the AC main side. So the website for the mutes will be beneficial environments. Oh, radar, so user one, radar and other emitting masks and ways of protection. Uh, okay, well, that is shielding. Um, and that is um, lots of lots and lots of different ways of doing that. One, one shielding is that. Silver, the silver lined, uh, silver lined stuff, and that's very effective and obviously immediate and cheap, relatively cheap than redecorating your whole house. Um, but anyway, um, so we can do shielding as a topic one day if uh, one of these meetings, if you like. Um, and may, maybe, should we, um, maybe should, do you want do you want to do that next week? Should we cover shielding because it's um, it's quite complex. Yes, you would. In your, on your workshop, Withering, Maine, yes. Okay. Okay. User one is called Maya. Hello, Maya. Nice to meet you. Um, sleep hygiene and shielding might be a really great topic. Yes, okay. She, and very much part of the same thing, except, except the, the sleep shielding is to do with... Um, our three sheet system and and so on yeah okay so um that's uh shielding house would be good so much for the info okay we'll do we'll do shielding we'll do shielding the house and uh sleep particularly sleep um obviously um sleep is the most to make a sleep sanctuary is the most by far the most important thing to do to let your body re properly recover with a good deep sleep well not being irradiated so um, till next, really looking forward to next Monday um, and do, do spread the word around. Obviously, we've got uh, about a dozen, four, we've 14 participants, so including me and, me and Paul. So that's 12, 12, um, of 12 viewers. Um, OK, we could, we could do some more, really. But um, so uh, do spread the word around. OK. And we'll um, see you next week. Okay, bye now.